Testing. Testing. One, two, three. Northern Ontario, Canada. Hi, folks. Is it time? It's time. Oh. It's time. <laughs> I thought there was like two minutes left. No, no. It's eight o'clock. Oh. Audio's good? Video, no. What's up with the video? <clears throat> okay, there's okay. the video. That's all we need. Hi, folks. Hey, everyone. So what's going on? Oh, what's happened since last week? So, not much. Um, we did some chaga hunting. I made some chaga tea. Um, it was minus 20 hovering around there for a lot of the weeks, so that kind of limited us in a lot of ways. We burned a lot of wood this week. A lot of wood. Um, Dave went ice fishing. I did. Caught a... Perch. Amanda's probably right. That's about it. I went to work. Yeah. And so, Dave came up with a crazy idea. Yes. So we are going to unplug the power in our house this week. Sorry. Next month. Yes, Bob killed a chaga and skinned it. It's not too bad, Andrew. Minus 20. We've gone through worse. I still wear my Crocs outside in this weather. He does. He was clearing off my car, my truck today with, with his <laughs> Crocs on. So, yeah. Okay, so what we wanted to talk about tonight was we are going to unplug the house for the month of February and we're gonna take the next 12 or 13 days to prepare for that so we have a list here of things that we have thought of that we need to do and we wanted to kind of go over it with you folks and just chat about it and see if you guys can get give, give any more insight into uh, how we should be preparing for this. Bob, I'm looking at you right now. <laughs> so I I categorized the list, um, four categories. Eat, clean, entertain, illuminate, live, and work. So under eat, we'll have to be able to cook our food and keep our food fresh. Okay, let's start here with uh, Andrew. Energize. Yeah. What does off the grid or unplug the house mean? So we are not disconnecting from the internet. Um, there's various ways you can turn off the grid. And I am not really interested in becoming antisocial and not socializing with people, especially with you folks, because you guys are quite the crowd to chat with and hang out with. Um, so what we are going to do is eliminate all electrical power from the house. We're going to shut off our, our breaker box for the most part. There's one thing that we're going to keep running, and that is just going to be the water pump from the well. And that is mainly because I do not want the lines to freeze. I mean, they're six feet underground, so there's minimal chance of that happening, but it could happen. So we'll be having the water running, uh, but that's about it. That's, that's, we're going to run everything off of solar. We have a small solar system and we are going to, we've also got a generator that will run to keep, keep things going as we need. If needed. If needed. Yeah. Try to avoid that. So some of the things, no, we're not going to disconnect from the solar. That's how we're going to power off grid. Mm -hmm. Okay. So 
why don't you start us off here? Thanks, Amanda? Jim. Um, so as I started to get at, first thing would be eat. Um, we're thinking of filling, we're going to make use of the fact that it's freezing outside and fill a bunch of buckets with water and put them outside to, to freeze and then put them in our chest freezer to keep our food cold for the month, but not frozen. Because we just put them outside, everything would be frozen solid. Um, Andrew, to that effect, we only heat with wood here. So the temperature in the house should not change at all. The air circulation that we have that runs down into the crawl space and then also back up out of the crawl space, that's running off solar currently. So that's that's not an issue that I expect to have. So I think we'll have to, we're gonna try not to use the water even though we have it on, but we'll have to run it every once in a while to make sure that it's still working. Yeah, just to make sure that things haven't frozen up. It'll get turned on for a couple minutes morning and a couple minutes at night. <clears throat> um, we're going to cook on our wood stove. We already do that. Yeah. So that's not going to be a big change for us. Yeah. It's pretty rare for us to cook using our electric stove and oven. Although tonight just so happens we did because we wanted to have a pizza. Mm -hmm. Good pizza. Um, we have the solar that we can uh, run our our router. Yep. Modem and router. Modem. Uh, to keep us connected to the internet and charge our devices. We're going to replace our larger TV with our <coughs> computer monitor because it uses less electricity and we won't. Uh, good question, Dave. We have amassed a collection of oil lamps that we're going to use as our main source of light at night. And candles. And candles as well. And um, solar lights. And the the uh, oil lamps actually, believe it or not, about half of them are from Connecticut mm -hmm. when we were living down there because we were experimenting with basically living with zero power in the cabin that we lived in there. <clears throat> what are our goals or our motive for this experiment? Uh, we fully intend to go completely off grid in the future. And this is going to be an experiment to see where our highest energy demands are really going to be. What, what do we really miss when we disconnect the power here? Also, I kind of want to slowly add things back in to see what actually our biggest energy demands are, like what co uses the most power to run, to maintain. So maybe for the first few days, we just plug the fridge in and then and we start using the lights and things like that. Mm -hmm. I think you should speak up a little bit. Am I not talking loud enough? You're a little quiet. <clears throat> uh, so that's those are the basic ideas that we're hoping to take away from doing this. Um, hot water, Bob. In the future, <clears throat> what we would be looking at running is a an on-demand propane-fueled hot water uh, system. For now. <clears throat> For this experiment, we're undecided, but it will probably be a lot of just uh, bathing with hot water heated up on the wood stove. Amanda has showers, access to showers at work, so she can use those. Um, I might get a little bit stinky, but luckily there is no smell-o-vision on the internet, so you guys won't have to put up with that. Amanda, on the other hand, she might have to. We're kind of planning on having a large pot of water on the wood stove at all times since the wood stove will be going at all times. So we'll be keeping water primed. We'll be keeping water primed to be heated quickly for things like coffee and showers and cleaning. Um, we're going to melt snow to flush the toilets. Uh, Sam, <coughs> we are on a septic system here, a leaching septic. So there's zero electricity involved in this. It's not an ejector system. 
yes, uh, the bearded giant, Andrew, doing laundry might be tough. Uh, I have a lot of clothes. Amanda has a lot of clothes. So I figure a month yeah, shouldn't, no. shouldn't be too bad. <laughs> We do have access to laundromats. Actually, a friend of ours just south of us owns a laundromat, so we will probably bug him to... Uh, We're hoping he will sponsor... Yes, he will sponsor our... Our, our off-grid experience. Yeah, our laundry demands. <laughs> <coughs> yes, that is Stacy. Um, hey, Stacy. Stacy's my little sister. She's down in southern Ontario. Yes, Bob, thanks. If... Uh, people are asking questions. Please put them in capital letters so that we see them. The chat screen goes relatively quickly. Does this make a difference to me? It does to me, that's for sure. If everything's in caps, then it doesn't help. Questions. <clears throat> Most of my questions. Yes, imagine Acre Wood. Okay, so it sounds like the same, uh, same kind of thing with the propane system. And yes... With the canning pots and our our pressure canner and things like that, we intend to keep those on the uh, on the stove at all times. Yes, in terms of keeping things colder as well, we do have the crawl space which maintain is maintained at <coughs> ten degrees, so it is will be helpful for keeping like my beer my beer colder and things like that. It won't keep things fridge cold, but. That is right, Jim, you can. And uh, Kevin, yes. So hand washing clothes, I mean, I don't really have a problem with that. We do, we have a, a line set up in here that we can hang clothes on to dry already, so. Mm -hmm. And outside. No, do not turn them around, Andrew. No, that's Jim. No. Inside out's okay, but not turned around. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, if we need any projects to get done, we have a lot of battery operated tools. But other than that, we do have the generator and Dave actually has some hand tools. So, yeah, I have a lot of hand tools that were passed down to me from either my father or grandparents, things like that. So if you need to get something done, hopefully that will be sufficient. Um, we can also charge things in our truck if you cheat that way a little bit, because I drive back, we drive. We're driving anyway, so we can mm -hmm. charge things in our truck. Then we have a cooler as well that runs off of 12 volt. Yep, we do have a 12 volt, small 12 volt fridge cooler. Yeah, so if you needed that as well. Um, okay, why don't we... Should we bother with the list, or do you guys want to just keep talking? I've already gone through almost everything on here. Have you? Yeah. Okay. How many panels? Currently, we are running 400 watts worth of panels, Bob. And I would have to, I would have to check, but our batteries are about 360 amp hours combined. So not the best, but we have run all of our entertainment from just those solar panels in the past. Yeah. Um, we had a system set up in Manitoba that ran our TV and their music and all that stuff. And also when we lived off grid in Con. Con, Ontario. Mm -hmm. It's going to be cold in February. Yes, it's the coldest month. But we don't heat with anything other than wood already. So that that's not going to change anything, per se. Um, oh, for water, we also have Lake Inferior. Mm -hmm. um, we could drill into. It's constantly being recharged with, I think, groundwater. Yep. There's a constant running of water coming in as well as moving out. We'll have to sterilize it. <clears throat> yeah, we would have to boil it and... It's hard to say what the clarity of the water would be. There might be some sediment in there. Is that so? Yep. That wouldn't necessarily be your drinking water. Either. No, cleaning and cleaning and things like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, for a shower. So we don't. Dave said bathe, but well, there is there is another option that we had thought of. Yeah. 
we don't have a tub. But when we lived off grid in Con, we just used one of those like uh, camper shower bags. So we're thinking that might be a possibility to hang that in our shower and using that and filling that with warm water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, solar's been bad here so far. Um, not so bad, but we get a lot less sun here than we did in Manitoba. Yeah, so like, far. I have this little tiny um, fan, solar power fan thing that I've been sitting in the window and it didn't even start run like we never noticed it running until a couple of weeks ago it's been really cloudy but our solar system still runs it's better than that little fan i have are you offering andrew <laughs> that could get interesting that would be that would make for some very interesting videos <clears throat> Yeah, we think so too, Bob. Mm -hmm. And when we lived off grid in Con, it was in the summer, so we also used we used a black one, so the sun heated it. That's all we had for for heating of our water. That was good enough. <laughs> yeah, there's also that option, Imagine Acre. That's for sure. Oh no, <laughs> no. No, that would be awful. Ugh. Just thinking about that. It's actually been so cold here the last few days that when we go outside to get wood, if you end up getting snow on your hands when you're when you're getting the wood, it uh, and then you go to open the door, grab the handle, your hand freezes mm -hmm. to the to the doorknob. Yeah. So. It's awful. Yeah. <laughs> I did that uh, throw the hot water thing in the air too, and it froze in seconds. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, Leanna. Snowball Lufa. Lufa? Lufa. Lufa. Um. Okay. Yeah, there's, we've actually covered a very long, very large amount. Hello, Virginia. Of our list. Yeah, we do need a sauna. A whole bunch of places that we looked at had saunas, but this one didn't. We could turn the outhouse into a sauna. We could, actually. <laughs> Ooh, then new we wouldn't project even, for Dave. Yeah, we wouldn't even need to use the washroom in here anymore. <laughs> Anything you guys can think of that we should we're we're missing here? This won't be the last live stream uh, before before we actually go. But if anyone has any other ideas, hey Eric, how's it going? Anyone has ideas? No. I guess we thought of it all. Yeah, I think. <clears throat> that's all right Robert sometimes we catch ourselves like that too still wanting to watch the live stream but on mobile so it makes it a little bit tougher it's okay quite the delay too Ooh, I like the sounds of that Bob mm. <clears throat> do you think we could get that done though in that short of a period of time John, yes, we will continue to make videos. Um, one thing I have noticed with editing is that with the videos that we put together, it's a very, very high demand on electricity because when I've had this plugged into our inverter and things like that, I can just see the wattage use skyrocket when I'm editing. So I'm not, I'm gonna have to do all my editing in the daytime when the sun's high or I'm gonna have to go to McDonald's or something like that and try and get some of it done there. Tim Hortons maybe. Tim Hortons, get a double-double. Yeah, get a double-double. Tim Hortons, get some Timbits. 
Have you made sure your system runs your pump fine? I would imagine that's going to be your biggest pull. Yes, imagine Acre. That's uh, that is the one thing that we are going to leave on the grid. I mentioned that a little earlier, and it's only because I want to be able to run the water just for a couple minutes every day in the morning and at night, just to make sure that that system continues to run so that the, the pump doesn't lose its prime, anything like that. Do you see that Dave decorated our YouTube wall? We have a YouTube wall now. Yeah. Double, double, that one was for you, Eric. By the way, Eric, we're going to be getting out for a rip tomorrow, just so you know. Not sure where we're going to end up yet, but we're definitely going for a rip. It's supposed to be minus 20, so. Dave's a keener. I'm a keener. He wants to get out early. Yeah. <clears throat> and Ugly Mug, obviously, is here again. Should we, uh... Ask about that. What? The mug? What about the mug? What about the mug? I think Ugly Mug needs a name. Ugly Mug doesn't need a name. I actually converted that sticker into a magnet, so right now it's a magnet wall. But, possibly. Yeah. I Any would... sticker could become a magnet. Okay. Yeah. I would love a Bearded Giant sticker. Just Ooh. saying. Look good. Hey, City Stead, welcome. Oot and a boot. Um. Uh, Sean, hey, Sean. Uh, right now, we currently spend $85 a month on electricity. Um, how it works here is you pay a certain amount for the energy you use. And then you pay a delivery fee, which also is rated by how much you use. So I am quite interested in seeing how what that would go down to. Um, and like what would be the minimum payment we would need to, to keep the place on grid without using much electricity. Oh. Mike Daggles here. Sean Primer is here. My brother from another mother. I think he's watching with his mom too. Hey other mom. Miss you guys. Uh, I did see something come by there, but I have no way to scroll back right now in the uh, chat, unfortunately. I haven't figured that out yet. D2? Oh, Dave. But Dave's already yep. Dave too. There's there's currently there are three Daves in the uh, in the group. So uh, Kevin just mentioned that this right here might be Dave four, and I kind of agree with him. Although Kevin, this guy has been in almost every one of our videos, so he did show up before Dave the dude. So maybe this guy's Dave three. Hmm. Maybe we should let this guy and Dave the dude have a little chat about that. Yeah, Jim, it costs us forty something for the delivery and thirty something for electricity. That sucks. At least it's it's not it scales. I don't know how much it scales, but yeah, our this little experiment is not it's not financially motivated. We're not going to save very much money at all doing this. I mean, if for for insurance purposes, we would have to stay connected to the grid in order for our insurance company to continue to insure us, which is required uh, due to our mortgage and things like that. So even if we did shut everything off here, we would still be paying the delivery fee for electricity, even if we're not using it. It's a, it's a weird situation here in Ontario. Uh, the government made some poor decisions not long ago that, and I don't really want to get into that, but. <clears throat> Bye, Andrew's mom. See you, Andrew's mom. Thanks for joining us. And also, if we have to um, get more lamp oil, more gas for the generator, buy another shower bay, because the one we had is not functioning anymore, that would probably cover the same amount of cost as it would to get 
to get the electricity. Mm -hmm. so. But yes, it's about learning. It's about seeing where we use electricity, seeing where we don't need the electricity. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I agree, Bob. Definitely an opportunity to learn about the future for us. Um, Sean, Sean, I don't know what the minimum delivery fee is. Yeah, it, it ranges based on where you are in Ontario. Uh, the research I've done, the lowest I've seen is about 35 bucks just to have your hydro connection without using anything. So if you're connected to hydro, you're paying 35 bucks a month just for that. Uh, it's actually higher for recreational properties, cottages, things like that. It's like 50 bucks a month in this area. And that's before you use any hydro. We're not with Ontario Hydro. No, we're with uh, Algoma Power up here, John. And it's got the second highest delivery fees. Yes, in, and in Ontario, yeah. but it is prorated, so I don't know, I don't know what that means. They are crooks, Sean. Yeah, and uh, the interesting thing about our hydro and our delivery fees, the hydro that we use is generated about thirty kilometers north of us in a hydroelectric dam, so it's not like it travels far to get to us. I do understand that we're somewhat remote, and that delivery fee does include. Uh, when the power does go out, uh, workers, hydro workers coming out to fix hydro lines. Uh, it also involves keeping hydro lines clear, uh, hydro cuts clear, things like that. And we're so few people up here, you need to pay more to make up for the same amount of space, but less people. Mm -hmm. You could look at it as a tax, Andrew, but we are also taxed on... The delivery charge. Mm -hmm. I think the company gets the fee. Yeah. Not the tax. But the, fee. Uh, the yeah the company. I you know that's a good question because there's a lot of sneaky weird stuff going on with uh, the way hydro is generated and distributed in Ontario. Yeah, Jim, that'd be that'd be a good idea. <clears throat> I wish I could scroll back through these messages, but I can't right now. Yeah, is there anything that you guys wrote that we haven't acknowledged? Please put it all in capitals if you have something for us. Yeah, yeah I remember that too, John. Things were a lot different then. Mike. Yep, that's right, Mike. Which, that part we like, the few people. So it makes up for it in other ways, like we have essentially zero property tax. Mm -hmm. We live in an unorganized township, so we don't pay for a mayor or anything like that, so... Yeah, our, our annual uh, taxes for 2018, were like 600 bucks here or something like that. I think weren't they 617 bucks from what I remember. Our closest, well, it depends on the time of year, Andrew. Across the road, I guess. Yeah. Um, on our same side, I would say a, a kilometer away, At and least. then I don't even know on the other side. I don't even know where our neighbor is. Do we have a neighbor? On this, on this side? Not for quite a while, yeah. I don't even know. Probably a good 10 kilometers up the road there is the the next, well, maybe not quite 10, between 5 and 10 kilometers up the road. And the one that's closer on our side, they're from America, and so they're never here. Mm -hmm. The Americans. It's a Americans. vacation property that they have. We've never, they've never been here since we've moved here. Not that we've noticed. Anyways, their, uh, their driveway blew out in every single rainstorm that we had here in the uh, MTO, the Transport Ministry of Transportation of Ontario was there after every rainstorm filling in their uh, <clears throat> filling in their driveway and fixing their culverts and stuff. Yeah, Roy, we're both equally parched. Uh, we'll look into that video, Rick. 
we are about 50, somewhere between 50 and 70 kilometers north of Sioux, Bob. So that's 30, 30 miles? Yeah, probably 30 to 40 miles. So it's close enough for me. I will have to look into that, Rick. On the peak. But there's people right across the road. Yeah, there are a few right across the road, right on the lake. There's a few properties there. So our property goes down to a road, and then there's like this tiny sliver of land, which some people live on, um, that's right on the water. So those are, more of them are vacation properties than aren't. But there are people that live there. Yeah. Probably half, 50-50, I'd say. We're some of the crazy year-round people that live out here. There aren't there aren't too many up this way. There's a lot of people that come up on weekends, things like that, this time of year to go ice fishing or snowmobiling. But the majority of uh, folks in, in our close neighborhood here is uh, mainly summertime folks. Well, come visit us, Jim. Yeah. You'll have to sleep in the no. outhouse. Jim's saying 50 kilometers is about a four-hour drive, and you were right, Jim. It's uh, They actually just repaved a big chunk of the highway that's up this way, so it's it's not too bad. Unless it rains, then the highway falls apart, and I'm pretty sure the company that redid the highway up here is getting sued. No, I thought Jim was a Florida guy. No, Jim's down, uh, down in southern Ontario. You can still come visit us. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, and Bob, as long as we're available, we will we'll come on. We'll cross the border, come and have lunch with you and Mrs. B or something like that. So the beer of we don't have a city like the Sault Ste. Marie, the one that we're talking about that we're about um, thirty miles from. That has everything. It's essentially <coughs> has seventy five thousand people. It's a hub for quite a larger area than that because it's the closest really the only thing we have other than that um there are some really small stores all along the highway that are more for tourism tourism so there some of them aren't even open in the winter i don't know we're we're in uh we're in a pretty big bay here kevin so a little bit south of us, uh, probably with binoculars, we'd be able to see Whitefish Point, but we're in, it's like a horseshoe shaped bay with a big island right in the middle of the horseshoe. So it's hard to see out beyond that. <clears throat> yes, Sean, I've been uh, trying to get you to come up for a visit for a while. It's it's quite the spot for lack of population, that's for sure. Oh. <clears throat> hey, Ronnie? Oh, Ron's here. Awesome. Ronnie. We got to start making plans for that, buddy. Yeah, you got to let us know. Because I'm here and gone and here and gone. So. Mm -hmm. And because we're also all going out to New Brunswick. But anyways, that's a different discussion. From Sousa... From the lake? Yeah, from Lake Superior. We are... Probably like... As the crow flies, 500 meters. Yeah. Um, to drive to a spot to launch your boat, it's two kilometers. Mm -hmm. Or one, just over a mile. <clears throat> um, there is a property right across from us that looks like no one's using it. So our goal is to befriend some of our... Or lakeside neighbors, so we don't want to go as far, but yeah. we'll see how that goes. Walking distance, yeah. Yep, definitely walking distance. There, much easier to walk there. It's all downhill. Yep. Um, walking back. Is... You can't see that. <laughs> walking back is like this. Walking there would be very nice. But um, I'm think I kind of want to invest in a pedal assist bike. So that um, I 
can bite too late and back and not have to um, die on my way back. Yeah. Well, we got the ATV too. I mean, take that down. It's just a matter of, like you said, meeting, getting to know the folks across the road a little bit better and taking advantage of their lakefront property. So if anyone across the road from us is watching, come on up for a barbecue, some beers, something like that. Yes. Yes, they do. But in in the short term, they're not it's just not financially feasible to switch to things to the renewables. A lot of Ontario's power is quite renewable as well, since most of it is hydroelectric. It actually, Jim, it only knocks off, uh, well, actually, maybe from where you are it's different, but uh, from, like, from... To go to Kitchener, we figured it was only a diff it was less than an hour difference Yeah. from here. And if you add in waiting in line at the border and... You never know what could happen. It's not cold all the time. No, but it's cold right now, Eric, that's for sure. And it's not as cold as other places we've lived. No, nope. so. no. Nope. Manitoba right now is like minus 38 or something like that. So. Sure. Yeah. Someone posted a picture on Instagram of the thermometer this morning. Hmm. It's only minus 20.6. Yeah. We'll, miss, we'll lose that. We'll lose our weather station, Dave. No, it's battery powered. Oh. We'll just have to push the button on the top to see what the temperature is. We won't lose our weather station. See you, Robert. Thanks for stopping in. Gas powered assist bikes. What? Motorcycles. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you need a license and insurance for gas powered assist bikes. Where? Wow, eight hours to get to Manitoulin. But an electric bike, you don't need insurance or a license. No, not up here anyways. Maybe it's different. Is that different there? Do you need it for probably even, there? Probably even differs from state to state. So I guess, Jim, that, that's also like factoring in waiting in line for the ferry and taking the ferry across and all that stuff, right? Because the ferry, taking the ferry across from Tobermory to Manitoulin is a lot longer than just driving around. I mean, the only difference is that you're not sitting in your car. You're sitting on a boat for an extra couple hours. Uh, Roy, we kind of do. Um, we have a, a little pond. Uh, Lake Inferior that we uh, somewhat dammed, which is uh, co something that's constantly flowing into it. I think it is groundwater, but it's constantly being recharged and flowing over, like through uh, the outtake we put in the dam. So. Mm -hmm. A weed whacker engine. Ah, uh, you don't want to move to Kitchener, Rick. You don't want to be anywhere south of North Bay or Sudbury. Trust I grew me. up in Kitchener. Yeah. Kitchener person right here. She'll tell you all about it. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And a sister lives in Kitchener. Yep. And your parents still live in Kitchener. And my parents still live in the house I was born in. We spent part of Christmas in Kitchener. <laughs> In the rat race. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Rick, you know uh, Jason over at Start From Seed. Uh, he has, he really lucked out with his spot there. I mean, there are spots, you know, in southern or central Ontario that still exist that are somewhat affordable and nice. And he managed to score one. Very lucky. Yeah, I, I'm a former resident of Kitchener, too. 
Southwest Manitoba is minus 30 plus wind chill right now, going down to minus 40 with the wind chill overnight. Yeah, I don't miss that. No. No. But it wasn't so bad. It wasn't, but... It was a, like a... I always say this, but it was a dry cold. So if you dressed for it, you were fine. Like, I didn't really mind it. KW Surplus is a great place to shop. It definitely. We made sure we went there when we went down yep. for Christmas. And Jim, did you know there's also one in Brantford and one in Owen Sound? They're, they're named something like the divi a division of KW Surplus or something like that. But those are great stores. Mm -hmm. I can't go in there without buying something. It just doesn't matter. Uh, why not south of where we said? Well, Rick, I mean, I guess it does kind of depend on your motives for why you're moving somewhere. Uh, southern, Central and Southern Ontario are severely overpopulated. There is no room left. Property is not affordable whatsoever. Uh, you're nothing but rules. Just nothing but rules. You can't put up a shed in your backyard without having to get a permit or without having your neighbors complain to either you or to bylaw. You have neighbors, which, I mean, you know, depending. KW stands for Kitchener Waterloo, Andrew. Uh, it's So the surplus part, it has like army surplus gear as well as kind of more like a liquidation store somewhat. And then it has electronics and paintball gear. I don't know. Everything. Yeah. A lot of army surplus stuff. Did you say that? Yes. Okay. And hunting and camping and... Hey, Howie. Toys. Hey, Howie. good stores. Yeah, I like those kinds of stores too, Andrew. A little bit of something for everyone, that's for sure. Have you caught any more fish? Is that fish still outside? Yep. Right. Our fish is in the outside freezer. Mm -hmm. AKA just outside. Think so. <clears throat> yeah, KW Surplus is independently owned, but they've uh, they've just been so successful that they've opened up different uh, branches in some of the larger hub towns around southern Ontario. I wish there was one up here. There isn't. There's a similar store here, but half of it's a pawn shop. Yeah. So it's it's just not the same. It's really lacking up here for secondhand stores. Summer it might be different, like flea markets and outdoor outdoor markets. Maybe. I'm quite disappointed so far. Um, we had a, historically had some pretty good secondhand stores around us. Thanks for dropping in, Kevin. Have a good night. Stay warm out there, buddy. Four inches of ice. That's awesome. Yeah, we have uh, we have probably between six and ten inches here, Howie, depending on where you go. Hey, Pine City Apiary, Minnesota. Minnesota. It's probably a little bit chilly over there too. You and Leanna can probably talk about uh, the temperatures in Minnesota. Uh, in the Sioux, there's a Value Village. There's a Restore. That's it. Yeah. That's it. That's all I found. Yep. That's no. That is it. Uh, Andrew. Uh, lumber and hardware stores. There are actually a few. Uh, we have one that is not too far away. That is in basically uh, just part of a gas station about maybe fifteen miles south of us. Uh, it's a little bit expensive, but then in Sault Ste. Marie, uh, there is a Home Depot. Uh, there's a place called the Sioux. Sue build all, yeah. Sue build all, and then Timber Mart. Timber Mart, and then uh, there was a Rona, and a Lowe's, both of which 
uh, shut down just this past Sunday, actually. They're closing a whole bunch of stores across Canada. Lowe's and Lowe's and Rona are the same company. Lowe's bought Rona. Or the way around. Yeah, Bob, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a good 18 to 20 inches of ice on some of the inland lakes here, but Superior uh, just froze over a couple weeks ago, so it's still making ice. Actually, if we go outside at night, we can hear it. It's pretty cool, especially up, up on the hill here. And it echoes off the cliff behind us. And Bob, I'm sure you know what it sounds like when it's making ice, and it is just, it sounds amazing up here. There is a Canadian tire. Yep, there is a Canadian tire. That doesn't have lumber, though. No. Or used clip. Sucks. Um, so both of those saws are from Dave's grandparents from his mom's side. And there's the big one from the sawmill. Yep. Yep, that's out of... And uh, that phone. And the phone, yeah. That's sort of the sawmill that used to run in Mount Forest, Ontario. really big yeah ice booms yes yeah yeah the ice booms are really fun mm -hmm. <clears throat> top bar beehives I must have must have missed something there beehives yeah oh the uh, Minnesotans are talking. Oh, okay. Okay. You guys keep chatting. Mm -hmm. We're thinking about getting these. Mm -hmm. We're just worried about the bears. Yeah, the bears are a very real situation here, that's for sure. They'll have to put an electric fence around it. Which like this one. Yeah, Jim, I'm hoping to get a get out to the to Lake Superior proper in the next couple of weeks to get some pictures of the uh, the ice caves and stuff that are starting to form. In particular, up in Lake Superior Park here. Yeah, the ice caves on the lake are like a travel destination. People come from like far and wide. Yeah, to check them out. My favorite kind of fly for different freshwater species like the large and smallmouth bass and pike species and trout. They are all different flies. <laughs> yeah. No, but you could narrow it down to, uh, I would say, for me, something nice and simple, nice and quick, a clouser. A clouser minnow. So look that up, Howie. We're not really that much better for Aurora Borealis. We're not that north. No. It, it's something that, you know, it, there's a chance of seeing it here, that's for sure. But if it's the, not epic. No. If the, well, if the conditions are right, and... I haven't really no, noticed one that I was in awe of yet. But. I have zero reservations about switching off Rick, because, I mean, really, the only... The only things that we're really dependent on here are the fridge and the freezer. That and the hot water heater. Those are the those are the things that are really what we require. Coffee time for. is gonna be different. So I wake up first and I go and I heat the water and I'm grinding the coffee beans. So all that's gonna change. So my mornings are gonna change. So that's gonna take much longer. Well, not if we have hot water in a big pot on the stove and then transfer that into a smaller pot and crank the stove up for a few minutes in the morning. Yeah. It doesn't take long to get water boiling on there. Mm -hmm. So it'll take longer. Mm -hmm. I like to leave waking up <laughs> as long as possible uh, before I have to go to work. Yes. Yeah, exactly, Bob. Not not unheard of, but not common at all. 
Is that the phone from the chicken slaughterhouse behind Amanda? Why, yes, it is. It is. Yeah, that was that was one of the things that we managed to salvage out of there. That was uh, Stacy is probably too young to remember, but that phone was actually still up in the old cabin in Con that Grandma and Grandpa lived in. We could pull out the phone and stuff. Yep. Yep, that's an option for something quick like like uh, boiling some water or something like that. That'd be fine. But I would not recommend uh, regularly cooking, long-term cooking on a Coleman stove in, in the house. That's for sure. I'm um, sure. Carbon monoxide. Yeah. We do have a carbon monoxide detector. Yeah. And it's at zero. One thing that's very necessary for wood stoves have a carbon monoxide detector. Or if you use anything with propane. Yeah. It's a silent killer. I've seen the northern lights, but like not nice. Just kind of like a green haze. Yeah, I I saw the northern lights out in British Columbia one time, in uh, up towards Whistler, in a place called the Elaho Valley. That I could not believe what I was looking at at all. I could not believe it. I was hoping we were gonna see it when we were um, when I was doing field work pretty north in Manitoba, but it just never really worked out. You know, really. because it didn't get dark. It was so light. Yeah. We were, it's twilight at like one in the morning when we were there. Because it was around the summer equinox. Hey, Deer Park Farmstead. Thanks for joining us. Poof. Just like that, she disappeared. And now she's back. Sorry. No, nothing beats it. Yeah, I agree, Roy. Nothing beats wood heat. There's something about being able to rely on yourself to be warm, especially right now. It's almost minus 21 Celsius here. If if the power went out, uh, I mean, we'd be virtually unaffected. That's why I'm not too scared of this one month off grid thing. There's nothing worrying me about it at all. I'm not looking forward to showering, but it, I don't know, I've done it. I don't really care. As long as we set up something. I was trying to convince Dave that we could still use the water from the well, because if we went off grid, we'd still use the water from the well, but he thinks that's cheating, so. Yeah. We'll, we'll come to that conclusion, though. Maybe we'll, maybe we will use it, I mean. A steerno? What's a steerno, Bob? You'll have to you'll have to post a link or maybe let me know on content creators or something like that a little bit later. Speaking of which, uh, there are a number of content creators on here. Bob, could you or any any other uh, one of the content creator mods could you post a link to the content creators group just so that anyone here who is not already a member can swing by and see if it's something they want to get involved in. It's basically just a group of us uh, that get together and talk about content, creating content, not only YouTube. Uh, and it's also, uh, we're not only homesteaders that are on there. We're not only off-grid people. We're not only, so definitely swing by if you can and check it out. We have to buy groceries. We, we only moved to this property in... Uh, September. So we brought what we could with us from our previous homestead, um, what we canned, but um, we don't have enough of our own food for the winter. So we do make grocery trips. We're pretty good at, we're only the two of us, so we don't do it that often. And we buy, well, one thing I'll have to change for this month is we usually buy meat in bulk and then freeze it. Um, I guess we can still do that because it's frozen outside, but 
we'll have to be more careful about that and keep an eye on the temperature to make sure it doesn't go above zero. Oh, okay. So a gel fuel or alcohol burner. And we, we actually do have a number of uh, like the little gel canister sorts of things and the little stove that you put on top. So that is another option. We have that. We have I've never heard thing. them called sternos though. Sternos. Sternos. Um, we have a really deep well. Yeah, it's uh, about 300 feet. I would have to pull the paperwork out. It might even be more than that. It's it's really deep. It's really deep. Uh, John, yes, studded tires are legal here. And uh, surprisingly, actually, a lot of people do use them. You don't really notice when you're driving around, but if you're out of your vehicle walking around in town, you can hear the studded tires cruising around. Yes, we also like cured meats, so those would work. Yep. Those are more like a lunch thing. Uh, still just the wolf, Howie. That's still the craziest thing that we've seen. Um, yes, we have historically produced our own meat, our chicken meat, and we're going to do that again. Uh, we are hoping to trade for pig. And I really do want to do rabbits. Mm -hmm. It's just more of a wrapping my head around killing them issue, which I will get used to, but they're just so cute. Um, Dave's we're getting a goat, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know, John. It's weird that uh, in some parts of Ontario it is legal and some parts it is illegal. I've always wondered what would happen if, you know, if you live up this way and you've got studded tires, if you drove down south, what would happen if you got caught with them? I mean, because a lot of folks up here assume that it's legal everywhere and a lot of folks in southern Ontario assume that it's illegal everywhere. So it's weird. It's a strange thing. Uh, yeah, a couple of you that, um, no, just, yeah, we, we're going to hunt at some point. It's not a priority on the list, but it is going to happen. Yep. Once we get, once we get things built here and we're more situated, uh, cause yeah, as Amanda said, it's, it's low on the priority list. <clears throat> cool. We have moose up this way too. We have not many deer, but we do have, uh, moose is the big, uh, undulate. Undulate in this area. Uh, oh, there will be several goats. Don't you worry. Don't worry, Roy. Probably like 10, maybe 12. <laughs> we, we don't have any grass. We don't have any... Like, if we're starting to get these bigger animals in, this is a conversation for later, but we're going to have to buy a lot of um, so, personally, I feel like I would prefer to try to keep it to things that we can sustain on our property with just things we grow on our property, but I also understand the desire for goat and goats. Most oh. tastes amazing. Hey, Marie. Thanks for stopping in. Okay, we are getting pretty close here. It's been Ooh. almost an hour already. This isn't as fast as Bob's hour, though. No. Bob's hour goes really fast. And folks, there's a number of you in here who may not know about uh, what Bob's got going on. Self-Reliant Roadshow. He is going to be touring around, uh, starting in the United States uh, this summer and continuing, hopefully heading up north through Canada and hitting Alaska, places like that, uh, and basically visiting homesteads. Um, I don't want to give all the surprises away about the Self-Reliant Roadshow, but if maybe Sam or Andrew or Bob, if one of you guys could link to Bob's channel, just so that folks can head over there. And uh, check out a couple videos of his. 
Okay, I misspoke when I said grass. <laughs> it seems everybody here says ghosts don't like grass, but uh, we don't have anything. Like we have rock. Yeah. Like bare rock and gravel. But we'll figure it out. See you later, Jim. Thanks for dropping in. Nice chatting with you. And thank you, everybody else. Uh, it is nine o'clock. That is a full hour. And uh, yeah, if you think of anything um, between now and whenever, just leave us a message about uh, upgrading it to kind of make it easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, feel free to come back and comment on this video with any any tips or whatever that you wanted us to see. Maybe you maybe you asked us something or told us something that we should be thinking about that we missed and we didn't uh, notice it come up in the chat. So please leave anything like that in the comments. Um, it's now nine o'clock and we are going to sign off. Thank you all for joining us. This is our only our second live stream. So I'm glad that all of you guys came and hung out with us. We will try and do this every Friday night for uh it might slow down a little bit in the spring and summertime when we're we're working later into the evenings when the sun is up. But until next time, see ya.